Good morning, lovely people. Um, I'm not convinced that this is working, so I'm, I'm recording it um, separately, and I might I might put it up a bit later on um, if it, if it hasn't streamed live. Um, apologies for the tech problems. There's been um, uh, a few internet problems around here this morning, but anyway, here I am. So, welcome, welcome to your Yoga Solutions Live 2021. Uh, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva, and I'm here to um, uh, offer the best of uh, what I have to offer. Um, yes, yeah, I, I hope you're having a wonderful time. I, ho I hope you had a lovely Christmas and um, uh, a joyous New Year. And uh, Yes, I haven't. Uh, when I was looking at Facebook earlier, I hadn't had any questions. Um, but um, yes, so I'll, I'll just share with you um, something. I'm not sure what. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm a little bit tired this morning. I was up till um, yeah, something like four in the morning last night doing stuff. Um, so I'm a, I'm a bit frazzled, but um, that shouldn't stop me practicing. So I thought it shouldn't stop me sharing my stuff uh, with you. So let's get on with the content. So the um, yeah New Year, New, New Year's a time that we um, um, whoops, pardon me, whoops. There we go. Yeah, uh, New, New Year's a time that we um, like to set intentions. Um, we, you know, we, we set good intentions. We should do this. Should, we should do that. By the end of the year, I should achieve this and that. And um, what I was thinking uh, when I was posting this is um, what, what intention do you want for your for your relationship to your body that that's I think that's a good question to to put uh, you know, as a human being we, we have all these uh, mind led agendas you know um, and and the mind is essentially the thinking mind the, is a calculating tool. It's a, it's a thing that um, is looking out for problems, and and you know, and uh, and I'm here doing that with my yoga solutions. Um, but um, lo looking out for problems to solve and you know, what's good, what's bad, that sort of thing. And um, a lifetime of this, a, 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 your, your entire history of choices that you made. Uh, become kind of preset. They become preferences. They become um, things that you ideas and that that you consider as reality. Um, and and it's also the, the the thinking mind is also a reactive animal. As in, um, we, we we think we are this uh, these thoughts, um, but. Um, once again, you know that those thoughts are set in motion usually in reaction to the environment around us, uh, and the reactions are based on previous experience and history and ideas and beliefs and all the rest of it. So, you know, when we're setting intent, we we set it from the mind. What what's our you know gen generally speaking, it, it's um, uh, the the question is you know what's our agenda? What do we want? What do we want to achieve? What do we want to have? And all the rest of it. So this this is life. <laughs> this is normal. This is the, the way things are. Um, but I'll, I'll share with you something that has become clear to me over the I don't know thirty years or so that I've been practicing this yoga. Um, the mind doesn't really know what it's doing. It, it's it's kind of busy reacting and busy forming new opinions. And and one of the things it likes to likes to do is is um, lock down um, some picture of reality that it has formed to feel safe. Uh, you, you know this. You know if um, if you uh, these days if you uh, if you challenge someone's reality, it's like you're threatening their lives to some degree. You know there's a, a, it's a source of arguments. A bit, Two two people having different opinions about what what is real, um, what's the truth, you know, and um, what am I saying? Uh, oh, I've lost my thread now. Um, I mean, never mind. It's um, <laughs> oh, give me give me a second. Uh, this is one of the disadvantages of being tired. 
uh, so the mind is less sharp. But uh, yes, uh, the, 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 what we consider as, uh, as right and wrong. Ah, that's right, my, my yoga journey. What, what I've discovered over the time, over time, is that um, the, the mind makes it up as it goes along, and, and it doesn't necessarily point you in the right, right direction. And when I started my yoga journey, I was most definitely heading in the wrong direction. And um, the, my ego, my mind, my, uh, the, my personality was fixated on that goal as being the source of potential happiness, but it clearly wasn't going to work out that way. And um, the thing that shifted for me was in unraveling the complications that my body was um, showing to me, was it was presenting to me um, as I unraveled them I, I became more and more aware that those those complications were in things that I had imposed upon the body through holding fixed mental impressions through um, holding positions through um, attaching to my agendas which are based on good bad right wrong what I want, what I don't want, preferences. Um, fine, all well and good, all, all very human. But if the mind is lost in any way, then the outcome I discovered is that the body will tell you about it. You know what I mean? If, if you're, say, say for example, you're in, in the company of someone that you're, you don't, actually feel safe with for whatever reason there, there might be no real uh, evidence of why you shouldn't feel safe it, they, they, you just feel wrong you know but the mind would say if, if that person is being uh, apparently being kind or if 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 that person seems to hold um, the key to something that fits your agenda you will distort your perception of what's in front of you to suit your agenda your body will be telling you this. You will feel uncomfortable, and <clears throat> and we get very practiced at ignoring these signs that the body uh, is giving us at all times. What I've what I discovered, what what I what I found is an answer to all these things. Uh, what I found is the thing that will lead to a solution in life for me but I've grown to believe that it's true for absolutely everyone, is to listen to what the body is saying. And I, I don't mean listen like you're watching TV or um, listening to someone talk to you on the phone. I mean spend time in quiet, deep communion with your own body without leaping into reaction. Because... Just spending time with that part of yourself that is complaining for whatever reason. Um, spending time giving it the conditions that it needs, which is essentially it, it wants to relax, it wants to breathe, it wants to um, become part of you again. You know, Just spending time in direct communion with your body will give you access, direct access, to your true intent, your deeper essential needs. I'm not talking at an instinctual or animal level. That's the function of the thinking brain. That's what it's for, is to work out how to get yourself food, how to be safe, how to find shelter, and all the rest of it, and how to interact with people. I'm talking about um, your something deeper, something beyond the um, the mundanities of survival i'm talking about your sole purpose your reason if, if there is such a thing as a reason for being here your body holds that information and and it tells you about it because when when something is moving in the right track you feel it and the, and the body will give you a reward on some level um uh, probably probably um, brain <laughs> brain chemistry but you know when it's right. You know when something is right, the right thing. And spending time in communion, direct communion with what the body is saying to you, without necessarily having to understand it, you know, 
just spending time with it and setting up some fundamental conditions of um, safety, comfort, um, ease, support, uh, that sort of thing, whilst paying attention, not thinking about, but paying in, being in direct attendance to the, your direct somatic experience of yourself, gives you gives the mind time to let go of its future pro projections its past references and enter this moment and the, the moment you do you sort of wake up this connection this connection to um true intuition intuition that is based on your heart's desire. So how about this for a setting of intent for 2021? Spend time every day, just 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's probably all I haven't left after I've <laughs> carried on, after I've been waffling all this time. But spend 10, 15 minutes every day just being with your body in a physical way. I don't mean just lying down and, and, and daydreaming or, or trying to go to sleep or something. And I don't mean doing, making yourself do postures, uh, push up. I don't mean doing anything to the body. I mean being with it. 10, 15 minutes every day, and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll do something in a minute. It's my sort of uh, foundation practice. And, and if, you could, if you can download this video, then um, uh, I'll do a 10 minute practice at the end of it so you can download it and use it. And uh, if you've got the facility, you can clip out all this <laughs> waffle at the beginning um, so that you can. So you've got something to guide you so you don't have to think about it. But every day for the first couple of months of the year, well, one month will probably do, you'll get hooked, um, but I'll, I'll make it two just to make sure. And watch your life change. Because uh, if, if you, the, your body holds the answers. It, 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 and when you, when you spend time becoming more sensitive to its voice, you get better at listening and you get better at knowing what to do. And the mind can relax because it doesn't have to spend so much time calculating, projecting and reacting. You can find your path. You can find your Tao, you know, and that's that's um, these days. That's what I practice for. When I, when I started, it was to help me out of physical pain. But it turned out the physical pain was imposed by my own thinking, my own personality. So um, yes, time in direct communion with the body is like time in direct communion with your soul. And it's an essential um, daily conversation that you need if you want a life, if you want to, if you want to find ease and in, in guidance through your life. Okay. So um, anyway, that's enough pontificating on my part. Um, what we'll do um, is we will do the simplest of practices. It's lying down, but it's, uh, there will be some physical activity, some physical involvement, and it's my uh, fundamental approach to things. See, um, like I was saying, the, the mind and therefore the, the body is a, the, the, well, the mind is a reactive thing, and it reacts to your environment as if the environment is something that is happening to you. But actually what I've discovered, uh, what is, become very clear through practice is that how you perceive the environment is entirely dependent on how you engage with it. How the body then feels in response to that engagement will be your experience of yourself. And this is uh, why I've coined the term envirosomatic. Anyway, this is the, this is the position where you, you basically lie on your back with your feet on the floor. There's, um, the thing that, that you need to do as you arrive is organize the various structures of the body, the heavy structures of the body that are usually being carried by, lifted by the spine or hanging from the spine. So the, the head, 
the pelvis, and then there's something to do with the shoulders. Um, you need to organize them so each part of you is vertically resting through the ground. So we're not lying down to flatten our backs or stretch our necks or do anything like that. In, in fact, um, our movement is so habitual, you, you need to turn up to how this goes. So if you start by being on the fronts of your feet and let the pelvis float up with that, take hold of the top of your head and uh, so you can sort of take its weight, not by lifting it, but by pulling it onto your spine. And then just um, roll around until you're in the middle of the roundedness of the upper back. Whilst you're supporting yourself with your feet and whilst you're supporting your head with your arms. And when the rounded, the centre of this rounded part of the upper back is on the ground, leave it there and a little bit of pushing out through your toes so you can kind of relax the pelvis down with the heels. Um, but it, you kind of stay in one piece, you stay pinned to the ground in the upper back. And also, if you're using your arms, the shoulders will be pulling into the ground, which is also very useful. So you lower the pelvis, staying in one piece, and so you don't have a tuck under. You let it drop back at the groins, but you continue to support yourself by pushing out through your feet. You also let the head rest back, not by stretching the neck, but you want this um, 10 pound weight, whatever it is, to land vertically down. And uh, you, could, you could find it by clasping your hands, putting your thumbs on your third eye, and seeing if leaning through your thumbs goes straight through your head into the ground behind you. And when the heels and the base of the spine, when the head have touched the ground, you should be in more of a confluent series of curves through the spine with the, the two ends, the uh, base of the skull and the base of the spine, um, kind of a bit closer together behind you. So that that bit of spine that you started on is not heavy on the ground anymore. The weight transfers from there to the two ends. Have the feet quite close to you, um, underneath the knees. And you can do one of two things with your arms. Uh, the hands need to be in contact and sort of acting as support. They need to um, grip each other gently. But you want your elbows vertically up and you want your shoulders back into the ground. And the way of getting that action, and because we, we need to get it interactive with, with the earth to start to um, allow things to shift. The way of getting the shoulders to get involved with that is by kind of reluctantly sending your hands away from you as if you're supporting um, a reasonably heavy weight, you know, like, a, I don't know, a, um, it, wait, half your body weight, okay? So you, it's like you're, have, you're having to push up to support some weight. And that, to do that, you'll use your shoulders on the ground. And you'll use your head on the ground and you'll use your pelvis on the ground. And you can also use your feet on the ground, just very slightly. And if everything is pressing down about equally as the hands are pressing up, then nothing particularly will feel heavy. So that's a sort of a physical, I was just getting you to interact with your earth and to interact with your space. And the, the intention of uh, pressing to the ground equally is to give the body the condition of whole support. Now, if you do it through the arrival of the breath, it'll feel like a celebratory arrival of the breath, a good news feeling, a, a yawn even, you know. And if you do it with the release of the breath, there'll be this coming together in the middle towards the heart as the lungs empty and towards the spine generally, an axial movement, movement towards the center of things as you release the breath. And when you've been engaging 
rhythmically in this fashion with your earth and with the space above you, making your interaction with the earth and the interaction with the space above you about the same. That's, the, that's why I gave you the idea of um, supporting a weight with your hands. And you can just grasp the hands and rest them on your forehead, leaving the shoulders dropping back, gathering back, anchoring into the earth so that we can reduce effort. But the effort wants to continue to relate to the earth beneath you, making the feet, the base of the spine, the head, the shoulders, all about equal in their pressure. And you do that as you let go to breathe. And the, the, the let go is from deep inside. And you also do it as you let go to release the breath. The let go is deep inside. But there is a, an ongoing rhythmic um, physical interaction with the earth beneath you. And because of that, you will have a, a relationship to space that is not heavy. So if you choose to um, sort of very reluctantly detach the hands because the shoulders feel like they're on the ground, you can do that. And I, I would do that a little more with the release of the breath, just to keep things rhythmic. But it's a very simple thing to do. It, well, it's a very simple instruction. The instruction is to make your contact equal, um, equally light, equally down, um, equally sensitive. So that you know, base of the spine is usually un desensitized for people. So make sure that you're just as much touching the ground with the pelvis as you are with your feet shoulders as much as your head. As you breathe, as you release the breath, make it equal. If you can, open your eyes so that you can have the eyes softly looking vertically up as you give vertically back to the ground. Soften your gaze so that you can take it in the periphery. And if your hands are up in the air, you can sort of imagine that your wings are involved in the breath. And that your hands and your wings are involved in the release of the breath. As you continue to plug into the earth in equal fashion. What this will be doing for the body, if you can um, engage rhythmically with regular rhythmic releases of tension, as well as engagement with earth and space, what you'll be creating conditions for within the body will be space. So um, tension in the groins, for example, wants to be released. And then a developing spaciousness within. It's one of the things, one of the outcomes of this practice of making your contact equal. And you'll probably notice that a little more as the breath arrives. There'll be less restriction to it. Will be broader, more celebratory, more complete, without having to puff yourself up with air. One of the other features that you will be uh, that this this practice can create the conditions to allow to develop, and this will go a little more with the release of the breath, is a a movement inwards towards the center of things, towards the spine from all directions, that goes with your interaction with earth and space. So a move, an inward movement that engages outwards, 
equally and oppositely. In the centre of that movement is the spine itself. In the centre of the spine is the, to my mind, is the spine behind the heart. That little bit of spine, that little cup behind the heart, cupped space that likes to travel forwards as you engage with the earth and release the breath. A little bit of spine that likes to open up as you meet heaven and earth equally. A movement towards the heart. A gathering in that opens you out. So those last two things I was talking about um, are more what you allow to develop from your practice. And practice is very simple. Make touch equal. Make it kind. Ground and breathe. Until you find that sacred space at the centre of all touch and all space. That sacred place. Talking about the heart. Because this is a place where you can, into which you can just let go. So that's it. Um, you might want to roll around a bit just to soothe any tensions that were surreptitiously there. And um, if you have, if you notice any tensions that have arisen, um, what you do is the next time you pay a bit more attention to that place. But as you get skilled, as you get practice with this, um, you'll be able to. In uh, the, the mind will be fully, the thinking mind will be fully occupied with making things equal into the earth, into space. But your presence, your awareness can be with more and more details. Because as you let go of visceral tension, as you let go of, um, you know, as you develop space within, then your sensitivity to within increases. Um, it, uh, tension masks sensitivity. Also, absence of engagement masks sensitivity. The body goes to sleep. So, um, the the with the, the engagement that brings you back to the center, it develops course supportiveness and uh, natural breathing responses that can support you. you know, there's all sorts of reasons why it's a good thing to do. But um, that engagement will also awaken sensitivity, but more directly sensitivity in the spine itself, through the spine itself. So you become more central, you become more in your center, in a real way, not in an idea, not as an idea. Do this for 10, 15 minutes every day for the next month. And well, see, see how you feel right now. And I, I ride kind of a bit foggy headed because I was uh, tired and I'm still a bit tired, but something's opened up. Something's cleared, and part of what's cleared is the noise of the mind. But it's the body that, um, it, the mind being immersed in the body is the thing that allowed it to let go of its agenda for a little while and be fully immersed in the body itself. And, and with practice, you can get to listen really quite, in a really quite detailed way to what the body is saying. And you won't necessarily hear voices or sentences or, or hear decisions, but you'll find that your actions become motivated by other things. And, and you might you also find solutions to, to things that you do have an agenda for. You know, you, uh, you'll get inspirations more freely. But the, the body is this amazing tool that can give us 
the wherewithal to achieve anything we like, including your personal agenda. But the way to action what you choose um, is not necessarily the, the remit of the thinking mind. It needs to in, it needs to interpret inspirations. It needs to um, make real. It needs to bring into this reality um, um, your inspirations. But you need to be inspired in the first place, and it's it's accessible to everyone directly through the body. There, there are other ways, of course, there are other ways. But um, the 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 bonus, the side effect, is that if you can spend time in communion with the body, the body rewards you for it. And hopefully you're feeling something along those lines right now. Okay, so welcome to 2021. Uh, I'm Mark J. Jack with Eva. I hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to share it around Facebook. Um, I've, uh, come and join me for a class. So um, you can drop into any of my classes. I've got one happening shortly in 25 minutes um, today. Uh, I've got another one tomorrow morning at 11. There's an intermediate class for people that are familiar with my work on Monday evening, 6.30. And this Saturday, I haven't put it up on the website yet because I'm getting a bit slack with my web um, development stuff. Um, but this Saturday, I'm going to be doing a, an open workshop, my, my um, Saturday morning retreats, uh, 10.30 till 1 p.m. Um, a wonderful flow, a gentle flow workshop that's appropriate for whoever turns up because I, I style the content around the needs of the participants. So uh, as soon as I as soon as I put that up, I'll share the link somewhere on on, on Yoga with Mark so you can um, sign up or or just go to the website. Uh, and uh, for those of you that really like my work and really want to some uh, want some regular guidance with me um you can sign up for uh, one of my memberships so uh, silver membership will give you access to every single yoga solution i've done for the last uh, year or so a couple of years uh, there's loads of them and um and you get access to my ultimate anti-stress course which is um, compiled of various snippets from classes where i've done superb relaxations for people um that's um, that's just it's less than a tenner a month, and um, it's a s subscription you can cancel any time. You you get a, you get it um, for free for a week if you sign up. You start the free trial. Um, then gold membership you can uh, have access to all my classes, all the on uh, on demand classes from um, the last year or so, and there's almost a couple of hundred of them, I think, 150 or so. So, and, and they, they've all got themes and um, every, everything's sort of listed. So if, if there's something you're interested in looking at, you can scroll through, and you'll find something. Um, uh, that's gold membership and uh, that's uh, 25 pounds a month, I think. It, it's, it's cheap. And it also means you can turn up to my classes and my Saturday morning retreats for free. Twenty-nine pounds a month. Uh, how, how many people can? Um, I suppose you can get you can get a um, uh, gym membership for that. Uh, <laughs> you can get um, what else? You can go to Bikram for that um, for the first month. Uh, but um, you know, this is uh, uh, I, I think it's an amazing value. Um, the, the, when a gold membership, you turn up for free. Uh, it's, it's view only. Um, I, I, in the people I interact with are my platinum members, and that's that's less than fifty pounds a month. And again, you turn up to uh, all my classes, all my Saturday morning retreats. Uh, apart from that, I've got some courses um, on that you can purchase for those of you that want to go deeper into uh, my methodology and uh, understand how it works and the rest of it. Um, there's various uh, somatic intelligence courses from um, haptic intelligence, proprioceptive intelligence, core intelligence, structural intelligence, and then the, my, my latest one, envirosomatic intelligence, which is kind of um, an integration of, of uh, some of the previous courses. Um, what else is there? 
Oh, that, that, that'll do. That's about it. But anyway, c- uh, come and join me for a class. Come and, or, or you can book a free one to one. Here we go. The, this is for this is for anyone out there. It doesn't cost you anything. Book a free fifteen minute consultation with me online, and um, see if I can help with whatever it is that you need. Yeah, and and it's not limited. It's not limited. Um, it can be it can be a knee problem. You know, and it doesn't matter what it's diagnosed as. You know, maybe you torn an ACL or something could be um, uh, sciatica anything you like it could be existential <laughs> anything book a 15 minute one to one i've got a solution for you i can help okay um and uh, you know I, i'll i'll give you what i can in 15 minutes and uh, if you if you want to follow it through you know you, t- t- you can take what i give you and, and just practice with it and uh, it should help um if you if you want to book a one to one with me you can and uh, i've got various packages from half hour sessions up through to an hour um and you can book what you like so anyway i'm here i'm here i'm here and uh and i want to help so um come and join me for something anyway that's me i'm mark jack with viva uh signing off until same time same place next week much love to you all bye now